I don't have a one wheel for you today, but I do have something pretty special. Be right back. This is a LaCroix Prototipo, specifically a fairly customized one with LaCroix Hyper Trucks. These things are big and wide. Now this thing doesn't really work. We are going to fix this in this video and I'm gonna show you how. Let's get to it. So let's consider this the first video and a bit of an expansion of the channel's content. I do ride electric skateboards and I love them quite a bit. What can I say? They're fun and I enjoy riding all kinds of boards. If you're here for one wheel content, worry not. I have a long list of topics I'm covering and the next video will be another installment in the Trick Clinic series, but also there will be electric skateboards. Diversity is good and I hope you'll stick around for it. This board in particular was more of a project than anything else, since I've also gotten into the business of building batteries, custom boards, and doing repairs. It's also fun, and I'd really appreciate it if you came along on this journey. Now, what are we going to do to fix this beautiful e-skate? Well, rip out most of the internals, add new ones, replace the motor, set it up, and let it rip. And that's about it. Biff bam wham, rip a jam jam. Just kidding, there's a bit more to it, but let's begin by highlighting the issues with what was previously done by the original builder of this custom setup. Okay, so we've got the tray flipped open, board is on the bench, and as you can see, that's what's inside. I've disconnected the battery, but I wanted to highlight uh, there is not what I think, in my opinion at least, sufficient insulation on these cells, and that is a bad thing for a number of reasons. One, generally electric skateboards are subject to way more vibrations and impacts during riding than most other PEVs, and when you've got cells that are this close together to more electronics, insulation would be a good idea. And the balance wires are kind of haphazardly tied together. This BMS is nice, it's a Neptune, but it's super overkill for this, and it's kind of a waste of space, and everything is kind of just glued awkwardly into the closure, so that's fun. We're gonna tear this whole battery out and take it apart, safely wrap it up and box it, and it's going to go back to the previous owner, and we are going to build a new one. Okay, so just a note on this battery as to why this board doesn't really work properly is this group of cells right here. This group is actually dead, as in drained flat. Now, a bit of a background on cell voltages, full for any lithium ion cell is about 4.2 volts. Empty is anywhere from 2.5 to 2.8-ish volts, depending on the cell. And so these are mostly charged to about 3.55 volts, more or less. This group, however, is currently at 61.8 millivolts. So that's far below a volt, which means that this is flat. Now, charging this, would be dangerous, because after a cell, or a group of cells in this case, sits at that low a voltage at that far of an undercharge for that long, the poles on either end inside the cell start to dissolve into the liquid electrolyte. And then if you try to charge it, these things called dendrites form, they're basically little spiky things when the dissolved metals in the electrolyte start to reform, and that's bad because that can cause internal shorts, and then this thing goes boom boom, and you are no longer having a good town. So, this could have been replaced, but I don't trust this whole entire pack, and we can do this a little bit better, and so that's what we are going to do. But there you go, hopefully you have learned something about batteries. With all that said, the only thing to do with this battery is very carefully take it apart, remove it, and build a new one. Not the cheapest option, but certainly the best for this case. If you're interested in specs, this ends up being a 12S5P configuration made with, in this battery, Samsung 42 cells. Now this pack can easily be made with something like the Molycell P42A cells, arguably one of the best available for this kind of application, but they were sold out at the time of this project. A little bit of info on the welder that I'm using. Currently I am using now a K-Weld, which is fantastic. I was originally using the Moletrix Arduino-based open source welder, and it works great. 
It worked well for many, many battery packs, and I had no complaints, really few, but nothing major. Then I moved over to the K-Well. That is hooked up to a relatively new car battery. I got this last year specifically to use with the battery welder, and it's running off of that, which is hooked up to my power supply on a float charge of 13 and a half volts. So whenever this thing makes a weld, it does drop the voltage a bit, but it pops right back up since it's on a float charge. This basically doesn't deplete the battery and keeps it very consistent since the voltage is always topped off. Each of the 12 groups is made of five cells and I made sure to insulate them decently enough to protect them from the carbon fiber enclosure. The groups are laid out in what's essentially a U shape and makes the circuit begin and end in the rear compartment. I didn't move the ESC from where it was, although I probably should have to save some gymnastics in getting all the wiring done in that last compartment. Speaking of wiring, each group has a series connection done with two bits of 14 gauge wire jumped across the segments to make connections from one end to the other. This carries enough current to handle what this board is going to draw and also keeps everything flexible between segments since the board itself does flex. A long bit of fish paper insulation goes down the center, which is where the balance wires sit for the BMS. By the way, if you'd like to see more pictures and details of this rebuild, I did a write-up on my blog, link is in the description. Maybe it'll be helpful in the case that you're interested in DIY building or electric skateboards in general. Which you should be, because the one wheel is also an electric skateboard. Anyway, time to wrap the battery up. Alright, so the battery pack is essentially done. The PVC shrink did not work in the way that I wanted it to, so instead of that I went with another layer of captain tape, and then on either end of each segment I used a round of Tessa tape, which is fantastic. So it is essentially done. The main discharge isn't connected yet. It is currently charging, so I'm testing the charge. BMS is all wired in, seems to be charging fine. All the levels and voltages check out fine. And so once this is done, I will connect this, clean up that wiring, and then check fitment with the deck. I'd like to thank all of the folks who continue to support me on Patreon. It means the world to me, honestly, and your support really does help keep the channel going. Thank you. If you're interested in becoming a patron, the link is in the description, and I very much appreciate it. Now, this was shot on the Skydio 2 out at the Jones Beach bike path on Long Island, New York. It's where I do range tests and stress tests of boards, since it goes long enough that I've yet to be able to ride the entire thing. The farthest I've gotten is about 22 miles since the return trip ran the battery out on a board that I had built previously. So it goes on for a while. We'll have more footage of this ride in a bit, so back to the build. All right, we fast forwarded a little bit on this build and there's a reason for that. I kind of kept encountering one issue after another and after several days of frustration and workarounds and fixes and all that stuff, we finally arrived at a point where I can bolt the enclosure onto the deck, run motor detection wirelessly, which I will do from the mobile app version of VESC tool, and see if this thing will work the way I anticipate it working. New motors are installed and rewired, and those are good. I ran into an issue with the shims, the C-clips that came on the motors, and they were contacting the motor mounts, so those had to be replaced and that's been resolved. I had to do the rest of the wiring in the rear compartment and wire in the remote receiver which is tested and works and that is fine. All the wheels are balanced and the rear drive wheels which I will worry about once I run motor detection and do the rest of the setup on this but I did want to just mention that I did not record all the rest of the things that got me up to this point sorry about that but it has been an arduous process however we are almost done what's really left to do is run the setup of the motors which involves detecting their properties and their sensor positions VESC tool has wizards set up for this and fortunately it can all be run through the app Afterward, the rear drive wheels go on and the belts are set up, and then everything can just come together. I'm glad to say that this is essentially the end of the build. It's all closed up and ready to test. It's alive! <coughs> it's alive! <coughs> As I mentioned, I took this board out to the Jones Beach bike path to test it out. I got it up to about 30, 31 miles per hour and ended up with about a 20 mile ride total, 
with about 10% battery left. Usually the battery doesn't have a lot left at that level, but it's good to know that this can get about 20 miles of decently fast riding in and still have some left in the tank to crawl home without having to carry the whole board. For a board with this kind of punch, I'm happy with that. Range, of course, depends mostly on rider weight, riding style, and the terrain, as well as ambient temperature, so it will vary greatly for everyone. That all being said, this marks the end of the rebuild. I really appreciate you watching, especially if you're one of my regular subscribers who is used to only seeing one-wheel content. Again, rest assured that there is plenty of one-wheel videos on the way, with the next one being the second one-wheel trick clinic with Dave and Jake. If you found this video from your interest in electric skateboards, both DIY and production, then please subscribe since there is also a good amount of content coming relating to custom builds and production boards. I do hope you stick around, and I think you'll like all of the upcoming videos. As always, try not to fall, and most importantly, take care of yourself.